Hello, I'm James Preston and welcome to another edition of Executive Corner Expert Talks, a 20 minute focus on prescient therapeutics. Prescient Therapeutics is an ASX listed company. It's one of the leading clinical stage oncology companies developing personalized therapies against cancer. The firm's key programs are universal CAR T and targeted therapies, and both approaches are directed to bring about better results and help clinicians in the treatment of cancer. To take us through the finer points of Prescient Therapeutics, CEO and Managing Director Stephen Yatomi Clark now joins me. Stephen, welcome to Calkine. Thank you for having me. Great to be here. Well, Stephen, there are obviously plenty of firms dedicated to researching and developing cancer fighting treatments. How does Prescient stand out from the crowd? Sure, well, we're quite different from other companies in that unusually we're an ASX listed company, but we're developing uh, American technologies from the, the biggest and best institutes. We're unusual in that we're basically, we've got a big company pipeline, but we've got, uh, we're in uh, the current clothes of a small cap company, but we believe that will soon change. We've got a diversified pipeline that is diversified not only by the types of cancer that we treat, but by their stage of development and the different ways of targeting them. To sum it up, basically we're, we're targeting cancer on the things on the outside of the cancer cell and also on the problematic proteins on the inside of the cancer cell. So, but all of these things have in common, all of our approaches have a personalized therapy in common. That's the angle we take. Not everyone is the same and nor are their cancers and we're looking to personalize cancer treatments and by doing so, improve outcomes for patients. And the team that you're working with, how is that split? Do we have a research and development segment? Do we have a, a business team and also potentially marketing? How does the actual company function? Sure, we've got uh, we've got a team here and in the, in, in the US as well. Uh, we don't have any marketing yet. I look forward to that day when we're actually selling drugs, but we've got uh, both scientific and clinical expertise here in Australia and in the US. And our scientific advisory board is also Australia and the US. Our heart and soul is really here in Melbourne now with a, a growing uh, a growing collaboration with the Peter McCallum Cancer Centre here in Melbourne, but also we've got ties with some big centres in the US as well. Wonderful. Now, take us through a little bit about what you're doing with Omnicar. Is there incredible capabilities for growth in this space of, of developing? My goodness, this is the future. This is the... And I'm so excited to convey to, to listeners today that in our lifetimes, we could see cancer be conquered. And that, that's not an exaggeration. There's been more progress in the last five to 10 years than there's been in the decades combined preceding it. And we're seeing cure rates now with this new type of therapy called cell therapies, which mm. we've never seen before in the history of cancer that are even causing some people to, to use the word cure, which they wouldn't use lightly. It's just the start though, and using your own immune cells as a way of redirecting them and, and turning them against cancer could be the beginning of the end. And that's the spot that Prescient is in. The whole field is in its infancy, but it's already making incredible progress. But Omnicar is about taking it to the next level. And that's where Prescient is. We are way ahead of the curve and uh, although it's early days for cell therapy think of it like the early days of like the VHS we're about bringing Netflix to the equation and expanding the whole field up for everyone including ourselves of course but we expect the whole field to benefit from what we have to offer. Yeah it's very exciting I love how you mentioned there it's it's going to be something that benefits the entire researching field when it comes to cancer obviously this is something that everybody is looking to eradicate so when we can mm. share the information that we're working on, it, it just leads to such better outcomes for everybody, companies, and obviously people that utilize the treatments as well. Let's have a little look as well now at your CAR-T innovators. Speaking of those collaborations, how do you think those new partnerships you've formed will speed up the development process of these various things you're working on? Yeah, sure. So we take an unashamed approach. We license from the best and we work with the best, regardless of geography. And we've got really good in-house capabilities here at Prescient and they're growing as well, which is which is really pleasing and exciting. Um, our three programs that we're running in-house, we're doing um, in conjunction with Peter Mack. We've got 
four full-time postdocs on there and they're, and they're supervised full-time by, uh, by Professor Phil Darcy there, who's an international expert. So that's our in-house programs and we've got three of them, all of them potential game changers. But what we have here with Omnicar is a unique platform that can really be the Intel chip inside everyone else's computer. So anyone else in this field or looking to get into this field can take a license from us and use that. And so by collaborating with others, these institutes that you're referring to overseas and some companies perhaps, it's about lighting as many fires as possible and having them all catch and really enabling the whole platform. Now we've mentioned CAR-T, we've talked a little bit about Omnicar, but you also have targeted therapies, PTX100 and PTX200. How are those progressing and how are they different from the traditional approaches that are currently being followed to fight cancer? Yeah, so these are targeted therapies and they are addressing problematic proteins inside of cells, which basically muck up the circuitry and have these cells grow uncontrolled, which is the definition of cancer. They're not indiscriminate therapies like say chemo or you know, other types of therapies. These are about just addressing those problematic proteins and trying to switch those off and bring the cells under control and kill them. So that it is quite distinct from a, a cell therapy. But again, it's personalized because we're looking for those patients that have those problematic proteins, giving the right medicine for the right patient for the right cancer. So there in the clinic, PTX200 is in a type of blood cancer in a clinical trial uh, called AML that's being undertaken at uh, the third largest cancer centre in the US, the Moffitt Cancer Centre, and another one called Kansas University Medical Centre. That's underway now. Um, in that disease, patients are typically dead in between four to nine months, depending on the literature. And we've had three complete responses, complete uh, eradication of disease on that study so far. That's currently in escalation. That's been a little bit impacted by COVID last year, unfortunately, which slowed patient recruitment but that is back on track. PTX100 is another interesting drug that switches off a different problematic protein and we're proudly undertaking that here in Australia under the leadership of Australia's greatest haematologist, Miles Prince. And we've found a really interesting signal uh, that this drug works in a certain type of blood cancer called peripheral T-cell lymphoma. Uh, the, the name of it's not necessarily important, but, but once again, these patients have no treatment options once they're refractory. So once their normal chemotherapy works, I guess, there is nothing left for these patients. And one would normally expect about a third of patients, a quarter of patients to respond for three to four months. And we had a couple of patients on therapy, one for 12 months, another one now at about 20 months. And it's, uh, it's, it's quite exciting to see this difference. That could be a fast track to market that drug. So they're both in clinical trials. They're both reading out data in the coming year. So either of those is a potential company maker. And that's completely separate to all of the exciting cell, cell therapy stuff we've got going on. Now, when you talk there about the clinical trials and some of the candidates who are now working with these new technologies, what's the process of actually procuring the people to partake in the trials are they coming to you or are you looking to them as it people who have gone through chemo and now there doesn't seem to be another option for ongoing support how, how exactly does that process play out yeah in order to run a clinical study there's basically a uh, it's part of your protocols part of your license to that enables you to conduct the studies is a very clear list about here's the type of patient you can treat. They must have these qualities. They must not have these following qualities. For example, they, they cannot be pregnant or they must not have other comorbidities or various things that rule them in. So they must have things that rule them in, but no, nothing that rules them out. And the clinicians and, and our partners recruit patients. They, they funnel patients, if you will, to that study. But also, as, as we're making a name for ourselves, we're getting increasingly patients coming to us wanting to be part of that. So it's, it's, it's a little bit of push and a little bit of pull that's, that's happening now. It all sounds quite exciting and hopefully for some fantastic results for your patients as well. Stephen, I was wondering if you could outline Prescient's long-term strategy to ensure standards are maintained and that your firm continues to be at the forefront of cancer fighting technology. You mentioned you don't yet have a marketing team, but there's a lot of exciting things happening in the background. What are you putting in place to make sure that the current trend that we're seeing from your company continues? I think it's about 
risk management is is the the baseline that you start from is to protect the protect the programs and therefore protect the company its investors so i think you do that through diversification we've got good diversification throughout our pipeline they're all incredible um, value creating um, potential events across all of those but inbuilt in all of those is a lot of risk mitigation um, and in each one of those we have a risk matrix for every one of those and we categorize risk by the impact of those risks crystallizing and the likelihood of those risks crystallizing so mm -hmm. if something has a low likelihood of one and but a high impact that is rated differently from something that would have a high likelihood and a high impact so we take risk management very very seriously and make sure that the value of the company is underpinned now that enables you to build upon that growth wonderful and ptx has been one of the best performing biotech stocks on the ASX in 2021. How do you intend to keep the momentum heading into 2022? I think we've just got lots of news coming out. We've got news coming out on PTX 200 and AML. We'll be, be able to finally get some uh, a readout on that data. We've got PTX 100 in a study that could be treating, uh, we could have a drug there that no other drug is really succeeding in and that could really corner a market for us and really be a fast track to registration so that's reading out next year as well but and we've got Omnicar in the background um, ticking away or well, not in the background very much in the foreground I should say we've got three programs where we're spitting out data on all of those we've got a uh, cell therapy enhancement program we've not even spoke about that's in stealth mode that'll be coming out of stealth mode about enhancing current generation cell therapies but really, I think the important thing, the picture to paint here, I want listeners to really appreciate what we're building here with Omnicar as a genuine platform. And, and basically, we and this is an ambitious statement, but I think it's something that we can do. We have a unique, rare, but very real opportunity to create a cell therapy ecosystem, not unlike what Apple did for consumer technologies and online services, with Apple at its heart, we can have a comprehensive ecosystem of cells and binders that personalize therapy with Omnicar at its heart. And so our long-term vision, talking about us playing the long game, the end game is a plug and play approach where a doctor will be able to profile a patient, look at their cancer, take some binders off the shelf to match that cancer, put them on some Omnicar cells and the patient's given the best in class treatment off the shelf like that. That's the end game and that's the holy grail. And we have the ability to put Omnicar at the heart of that. So working backwards from that, we've got our three programs. We're working systematically to the clinic, but we're working with third parties that can help us pull together the ecosystem, get that app store in order, if you like, and create this full service, patient-centric ecosystem for oncology and that's the end game and that's incredibly exciting well i think you've summed it up brilliantly it is incredibly exciting for the end game and also what the future holds for prescient therapeutics stephen thank you so much for your time today thank you for yours well that's stephen you're tommy clark the ceo and managing director of prescient therapeutics and it's been terrific to hear how the company is progressing i'm james preston reminding you to stay apprised and invest wise with calco